Merry Christmas. Yeah, I know Christmas Day is over, Christmas Eve is past, but we're still in the season of Christmas. There's 12 days to Christmas, so we're going to continue to focus upon this Christmas theme, looking at just exactly what is the Christmas gift. So to think about that, we have to reflect upon the theme that we've been running with all through Advent and Christmas, and that is that God is with us. Now, um, I'm going to start with a prayer, and then I'm going to have a series of questions, and I'm going to pause a little bit between the questions, and um, at home, go ahead and push the pause button if you need more time to talk about these questions, because I really want you to have some time of, of interaction and discussion if you're there with other people. So let's pray, and then we'll jump into this sermon. Heavenly Father, we pray that in this hour your word would be spoken and heard, that your Holy Spirit would place what you desire upon my lips and that you would open all of our hearts to the power and truth contained in your promise, your gift, and that through this, your Holy Spirit would transform us into the disciples you desire us to be. We pray this in the holy and precious name of Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, these questions are going to be really hard, so are you ready for the first one? Describe a gift you received at Christmas. So what I want you to do is I want you to explain what that gift was in detail and what it means to you, all right? So go ahead and talk about that. Think about all the gifts. Think about everything under the tree. Maybe you want to talk about a couple gifts, but have some fun with this. Second question is, was it what you expected? Did you put it on your list? Did somebody get you exactly what you were looking for? Or was it a total curveball? Uh, something you didn't plan for, something totally unexpected, something beyond your wildest imagination. Maybe it was a white elephant gift and you're like, what in the world am I gonna do with this? And I'm just gonna put it on the shelf and I'm gonna give it to somebody else next year. So talk about that. Was it what you expected? And talk about why. Again, if you want lo longer time to talk, Go ahead and push the pause button. The next question is, did you find joy in it? Did it do something to you emotionally? Did it, did it touch you at a, at a greater depth? Or, or did it just kind of leave you flat? And maybe it made you mad. I mean, maybe somebody bought you a diet book or you know, something like that, trying to give you a subtle hint, and it's like, eh, I don't really need that at Christmas, you know. So did you find joy in that gift? And, and again, why did you find joy? What was it about that gift that touched you and, and brought you joy or didn't bring you joy? Again, take some time, talk about it. Next question is, how do you plan to use that gift? It's going to be something you're going to use every single day. It's going to be something you use once a year. It's going to be something you are never, ever going to use. You're not even going to take it out of the box. You're going to walk it right back to the store and get a refund. Well, what is it? How, how do you plan to use that gift? Um, and that reflects, you know, the importance of that gift to you, the pra practicality of that gift, uh, the joy of that gift. And so how you plan to use it. Again, talk about it. Here's a big one. Did you say thank you? Did you say thank you to the person or people that gave you that gift? Was it heartfelt? Was it uh, just out of social pressure? Did you forget in the exhilaration of the moment? Why would you say thanks? Think about that. Talk about that. Did you say thank you. Now, when it comes to gift giving, a lot of times at Christmas, gift giving, this guy is the main guy, right? I mean, everything points to Santa being the main gift giver at Christmas, and, and everybody identifies that. I mean, it, we got movies, and we got songs, and we have Hallmark cards, and we have books, poems written about St. Nicholas, Santa Claus, loading up his sleigh, flying through the air with his reindeer, and delivering gifts. So he is the gift giver at Christmas, right? Well, 
If you said yes to that question, then there's a gift that you missed, my friends. There's still one under the tree. We're going to be looking at one verse of Scripture for this sermon, and that's it. Just one verse, and we're going to kind of take it apart and look at just exactly what is your missing Christmas gift. So this is the passage, 2 Corinthians 9.15, which says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now, there's a, a contemporary artist by the name of Chris Tomlin. Some of you might know him. Some of you might never have heard of him before. Uh, some of you know his music. You might have heard one of his songs. Some of you might be Chris Tomlin fans and go to every single concert when he's in the area. I don't know. But he's got a song that, that jumped into my head uh, in, in relationship to this scripture. And I want to take a look at a little bit of it. And uh, I'm going to attempt to sing it. Uh, I'm not a great contemporary singer, so I'm going to give it a shot here. So here goes. It's called... The title is great. It's called Indescribable. And it goes like this. From the highest of heights to the depth of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. I'm sure Galen's rolling his eyes. I, I butchered that first part. But anyway, you know, I gave it my best shot. Acapella is not always the easiest thing to do. But this, this indescribable aspect of God captured in this song, and, and the song goes on, and it, and it kind of uh, builds upon uh, that first verse. And, and really, it is it, the indescribable nature of God that's captured in that song uh, is what we might call, in theological terms, uh, a first article gift. Now when we say first article gift, we're talking about the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is broken into three parts. The first part talks about God the Father, creator of all. And that's, that's what is lifted up in this song. And that is an incredible gift. I, I don't take that away from Chris Tomlin. But when we talk about the Christmas gift, it, it, it really is not just, or maybe it's not at all, uh, a first article gift. It is what we call a second article gift. The second article of the Apostles' Creed talks about Jesus Christ, his birth, uh, his death, and his resurrection. So what is, what is being thanked for at, at Christmas is this indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. So, do you think that you may have missed saying thank you to God for your Christmas gift. Now, I want to, to say something about our Christmas tree at our house. And I've talked about this before. If you've heard it before, too bad. Uh, repetition breeds memory, right? And so here is a gift that is really important at our household. So what do you think? What about that Christmas gift? laying underneath the Christmas tree. What we do is we tie it deep within our Christmas tree uh, because that is, for me, the heart of Christmas. Now, a lot of people might think, well, no, the manger is the heart of Christmas or the star is the heart of Christmas or the shepherds and the wise men and, and, and Mary and Joseph and, and no room in the inn. That's the, that's, the, that's the real focus. That's the real foundation, the real core of Christmas. But I would argue that what is pictured here, underneath a Christmas tree, is the real Christmas gift. So, I'm not going to talk any more about that. I want you to talk with the people around you. If there's people around you, if there's not, just reflect upon this. How would you describe this Christmas gift? If you had somebody who was 
totally in the, uh, the blue or totally clueless, I mean, about Christmas and, and what this whole Jesus thing is, how would you describe that gift under the tree in a way that, that they might understand? So take some time and talk about it. Again, that passage in 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let's take this verse apart. First, thanks. Thanks. The word there in Greek is charis, where we get charisma, which means gifts, uh, grace, mercy. Um, it, it's kind of a, a state of kindness. It's kind of a state of favor towards someone. It, it's where um, you, you focus upon the benefit that you have been given, and, and you want to reflect that back to them. Uh, it, by extension, it's kind of a gift, a, a benefit, a credit, whatever. Um, but, it, but it is comprised of words of, of kindness and benefit, of blessing. So we as we reflect upon this Christmas gift, should turn our attention and give thanks to where it belongs. Now, I love Santa Claus. The whole thing is kind of fun. But Santa Claus shouldn't get our thanks at Christmas. Uh, the elf on the shelf. Uh, we personally don't have one at our house, but the elf on the shelf shouldn't get the thanks at Christmas. People who give you gifts at Christmas, yeah, say thank you to them, but but it's not a Christmas thank you. That belongs one place and one place only. Thanks be, and the be is inferred here, thanks be to who? To God. God is the one who gives us this gift. He is the one that has brought this gift to our Christmas table brought this gift to our, our Christmas tree, brought this gift into our life as Christians. So this gift belonged to him. No one else could bring this gift. This is, this is a personal gift from God to us. We have a God. I mean, get this. This is where this indescribable comes in. We have a God who, going back to the first article, created everything from nothing, brought, brought everything into existence. We, we could not exist without the presence of God. There would be no air, there'd be no water, there, there'd be no life. It would be impossible. There'd be no universe. And it is this God who brought everything into being, the, the vastness of the universe, the complexity of the molecular world. It is this God who loves you and me so much that he would give us a gift, a gift of eternal salvation, a gift where his son loves us so much that he doesn't want our sin to separate us from God anymore. He took the penalty for our sin and he died on the cross. He came at Christmas to do that very thing. He was born into the world, the word of God taking flesh and coming among us, with us, so that he could save us. God gave us that gift. You can't find it on Amazon.com. You can't find it in any store. Your parents can't give it to you. Your grandparents can't give it to you. You can't give it to anyone else. It is a gift solely from God. So, we give thanks to God for this gift. Now, this particular word in Greek, there's about 19 different ways you could translate this word. And it could be all over the place. And each one of them kind of changes the focus. But I think the one that makes the most sense in the context uh, that we find it is found in, in this uh, current translation. And that is, on account of or for. So thanks be to God on account of this indescribable gift, for this indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It's his possession. 
It's what he has. It is his. And God is willing to share that gift with us. That gift that brings forgiveness. That, that, that gift that brings freedom. That gift that brings eternal life. God, in his possession, releases it to us. That's why we give thanks. For recognizing that what is his, he gives to us. In scripture, it talks about how um, Jesus died for our sins. And Martin Luther, when he reflects upon that, he says, you know, Christ took our sins and made them his own. And he took his righteousness and gave it to us to make us forgiven, to make us holy, to make us presentable before God. Wow, that's amazing. So here's the word, indescribable. It's just what it says. It's hard to put into words. This Christmas gift is God's. It's God's to give. It's his possession. We don't, we don't earn it. It's not a credit. We don't deserve it. It's totally a gift. And because of that, from the source that it comes from and the gift it is, it is literally indescribable. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. It's like something that is so difficult to explain. You can proclaim it. You can, you can shout from the highest uh, mountaintops and, and say, Jesus Christ died for my sin. But to explain it, to understand it, to grasp it, to understand the depth of it, I don't think we have a clue. I think we're, we're so used to hearing that phrase, Jesus died for our sins, it just bounces off of us. Guys, it is un... It's beyond our words. I mean, I, I'm at a loss of words myself to try to explain the depth and the power and the, the, the massive nature of this incredible gift. We give thanks to God for a gift that we can't explain, a gift that we don't totally understand, a, a gift that we don't totally grab a hold of, and yet he gives it to us as sinners saying, this is yours. Here, receive it. It's yours. It is a gift. Totally a gift. It's given out of grace. And that grace, that grace and that gift, it's beyond words. Beyond words. Grace means undeserved love. So we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it at all. There is, there is nothing within any of us that makes us worthy to receive that gift. It is an indescribable, gracious gift. Remember Chris Tomlin? Tried to sing his song at the beginning. I'm going to try to sing another song. And this song is a second article song. And, and even though those of you that have been worshiping traditional worship for a long time, you're going to recognize part of this song because part of the song he didn't write. But he did add a chorus line. And so I want to share this with you and, and listen to the words in this song. If you listen to these words, you will understand that this person understands the incredible, the inexplainable nature of the grace and mercy of God. This song is called Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved 
How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. So let's go back to that God-given Christmas gift under the tree. And I want to ask you one more time. So, how would you describe this Christmas gift? And even though I'm done with this sermon, I want you to keep talking about this question. Amen.